Is there anything more adorable than baby chicks in the spring? So I had to sketch them in my journal. I'm using an Isabe Brown Sable brush. I'm using my big palette this time. And I'm sketching in my studio because I'm using some photographs to do it instead of um, trying to capture baby chicks while little boys are trying to capture them as well. Um, so this is a very limited palette. I'm using a Nickel Azo Yellow Cobalt Violet and I thought I'd show you some pictures of my palette so you could get some ideas. And um, quinacridone rust, quinacridone red, and a little bit of Van Dyke brown. So very limited palette and they're very soft. So I'm really using the cobalt violet mostly to dull the color. Um, it seems like they're bright yellows and very bright intense colors, but really they're fluffy you know they're very soft and so there's a lot of a soft dry brush not a heavy pigment dry brush and I'm scribbling a lot on my palette to kind of get all but the last little bit of color off of it and keep it rough with lots of um, lots of little white spaces or little spaces from the colors below there because usually there's the lighter colors on top and then you can kind of see hints of the deeper ones. Um, I'm doing two of the brown colored ones. I have no idea what type of chickens these will be. I um, think that Tractor Supply maybe didn't label them exactly right because they don't look like what they're supposed to be. But I guess we'll find out soon enough. So I'm painting just the brown chicks because they're going to be a lot easier than the white fluffy ones that have just a bare hint of yellow in them. They're going to be a lot more fun to paint. So I thought we'd go with those. So lots of little colors and just going crazy with that. I want the layers upon layers and that's going to do that beautiful downy fluff. I'm using, still using a sort of dry brush um, to make the the squiggles on the the feet, and they're kind of they wrap in rings around the feet. Uh, you'll you'll see how birds' feet are segmented like that. So that's a really easy way to do it. And there's just tiny little hints of pink in there. So I'm scribbling away so I can get just the hints of the pink versus. A lot of it. They don't have bright orange feet. They may later. We'll find out. But right now it's very subtle little hints of pink in the beak and all that area. So more of the cobalt violet to dull down any shadow areas but I don't want anything too dark. I'll put a little bit more dark at the very end but this is something that can be heavy and overdone almost immediately. So I really wanted you to see that this is a more mixing on the palette than on the paper, but I'm still using a very limited palette and I'm mixing with layers instead of letting the, the different washes flow together. So a little bit of a different technique for fluffy chicks. And you can think of other fluffy things that might work well that way. Um, sometimes leaves would look like that, where you're wanting to have distinct layers, but uh, a lot of dry brush in between them where it's kind of a sparkly effect. There's a lot of things that would work best that way. So a tiny bit of dinky detail in here. And I want that one leg with the highlight. I'm going to dull it down a little bit more, but I don't want to lose the highlight on that leg compared to the rest of the body because it needs to stick out a little bit. I need some form to it. Watch them trying their wings. So here's the one trying his wings out, her wings out. 
just some quinacridone rust. So still the quin rust, the nickel azo yellow, very limited palette, dull it down with some cobalt violet. Now the wings are really fun to paint because they're in motion and you can just see a little wisp everywhere of them. That's my parrot. Not the chicks. And she's got that one foot uh, pulled up at that really weird angle that they all seem to do where she's just trying straining so hard with those wings and she just wants to get them off the ground. So a little bit of splatter paint. I just kind of want to loosen it up and also the ground and all that it it is moving and loose and everything. So any places I don't like I just dull down a little bit like that because splatter is random. Or relatively random. And the cutest little tail there, just barely starting to grow those feathers. Adorable. Baby chicks really are the spring. My boys have been going crazy playing with them. So now I'm laying these flow into each other because I do want some flow. I just also want the distinct layers and that's a little harder to get in a sketch where I'm not, I'm saying I want to do this entire thing and I don't want to wait in between layers. This, this sketch actually took about 30 minutes because there were two of them and I had interruptions. So we know all about interruptions in everyday painting and we just move on. But I didn't want to wait for it to dry. This isn't an important enough sketch for that. It's something that's fun. It's a fun memory for me. So I don't know how many of you have gotten baby chicks in the spring and how you enjoyed watching them try to fly and flap their wings and do all these weird little angles and they're hilarious. So just very light. Remember feathers? Feathers are light. They have to be. So, and they also have the the pin feather in the, the, what do you call it? The quill in the middle. Um, and so it's going to be shadowed differently on either side of the quill. So that only half the feather will be at that lighting. Always remember that. So some dark, this is uh, Van Dyke Brown mixed with a little bit of the cobalt violet because I want to dull it down. I wanted a very dull, dark brown. And one of the finishing touches I'm planning on already is I'm planning on going back with a, a bit of, of white gouache and just pulling out a little highlight on the eye. Painting around the beak. And I want to leave those highlights if I can. It's not an emergency. If I use gouache on there, be perfectly fine to use gouache because that isn't really a translucent area. It was when they were very young, but you know, now they're a couple days old and it's hardened and it's not translucent, it's reflective. So reflective surfaces, white gouache is great, perfectly appropriate. Still, I like the layers of transparent watercolor. Now I need some dark. I need that head to take shape and I, I need the wing to stick out a little bit and really for it to take form. 
the little flying bird is going to be a little less detail than the bird that's looking at me. Partly because the picture I had was blurrier, but really because it's in flight, it's in movement, and something in movement should never be completely in focus. At the very least, the wings should be blurred. Unless you're doing like a wildlife study where you're wanting to have every feather in the right place, then you should have it blurred if it's in flight. That was interesting how the angles of the face changed a little bit when it was turned at that angle too. They look different from day to day. It's amazing. You see them grow up on fast forward. Already they're awkward teenagers by the time I get this video out. Still can't quite fly though. They can manage about a foot. And then kind of crash wildly waving their wings what am I supposed to do with these things <laughs> so a little bit of detail around the face I'm redefining the beginnings of a comb there and the face now I'm going to reshape there's a lot of shadows here on this one and I will have these pictures that I use for reference up on my website so you can use them it was a little hard to choose I started to do one and I painted like 10 on the same page and thought yeah, this is a little overwhelming for people Let's keep it simple. Keep it down to two. So I had to do the ridiculous one flying and then the classic baby. Cobalt violet. Very subtle color still. Many layers. I'm mixing it with some nickel azo yellow. I want that deep shadow there, but I don't want too much shadow on the leg. It, it needs to, the just the skin part of the leg needs to show up and the rest of it needs to, the thigh needs to curve around. So that's a little bit tricky in there. And you've got the sheen from the skin. And then the foot at that absurd angle. I'm just reshaping the shadows on it. And this is something that is perfectly well suited for a sketchbook. I don't see ever really making a full painting of it, but oh, it just makes you laugh, doesn't it? It's something to play with and enjoy. And this is what sketchbooks are for, just to have some fun and be a little bit silly. So you can see just a bare minimum, not my usual huge swaths of color. This is tiny bits of color. Very different. You have to adjust your technique for every single painting. I can tell you that this is how you do it, but it will change the next painting. And I will tell you this is how a beginner should do it because this is the easy way that should get you great success if you limit your colors that you're mixing on wash to three and stuff like that. Um, so some of it's just to make it easy. Tiny bit more detail. I want more depth on those wings. So it, just a touch of Van Dyke Brown in there. Very subtle. I hope you enjoyed Baby Chicks in the Spring and you'll sketch this along with me. 
the reference photos are on my website. Thank you so much for watching this with me, and I hope it inspires you to paint. Um, check out my website, paintingwatercolor.com. If you enjoy it, please give me a thumbs up or subscribe. Happy painting!